involves citizens. Can you speak to a situation where citizens helped identify and then contain a new story that was deemed to be disinformation? Certainly. During the coronavirus, uh, we had this rumor that says, Musk cannot be bought with money now. Manufacturers sponsored 2,000 boxes of Musk, and you can get a box for free by sharing this post. This gets reported to the Taiwan Fact Check Center, the part of the international fact-checking network. And the solution uh, to end this uh, speculation and scam, really, because if you share this post, you receive no box of masks, but instead computer virus, is through radical transparency. We trust citizens with open data. So there's more than 140 now, maps and voice assistants and so on. So everybody can see where the nearest pharmacy that still have masks are. You just go there, swipe your national health insurance card. And you can see after 30 seconds um, that the stock level deplete by nine now. So what I'm trying to get at is that the way to counter this information is not by um, pushing a, a counter narrative, but rather making the underlying data available to the citizens so everybody can participate in a kind of participatory ledger kind of way uh, to verify that these numbers are actually accurate and where do we have an oversupply or undersupply. Um, in Taiwan, we call it media competence, not media literacy. If you frame it as literacy, uh, it assumes that people are consumers and viewers of information. But if you frame it as competence, it means that everybody is producer of information. There was another disinformation uh, that was rampant uh, just leading to the election, the presidential one, that says the CIA, it's always the CIA, uh, made two in special invisible ink for ballots. So if you vote for President Tsai, um, your uh, ink will stay. Uh, if you vote for other candidates, your ink will disappear. And that was a conspiracy theory. And the reason uh, that this uh, was rampant was because people did not um, made it a culture to live stream the counting process. But for the past few elections, we built such a culture by not only encouraging, but actually facilitating the counting process. So each paper ballot is taken out, it's announced to everybody in the audience with a camera, and they are even invited uh, to be popular YouTubers uh, to live stream all the counting processes, and they have their own tallying during the process. So exactly like the pharmacy mask map that I just showed you, this in allows uh, all the different parties uh, and all the different journalists uh, to engage the citizens. So everybody become a journalist to produce original media and content to ensure that everything um, is fair. And if we do not have a fair election, if we do have an invisible ink, not to mention that it's not physically possible, uh, everybody during the live streaming and counting will actually see that happening before their eyes. And because none of such things happened, uh, we are reasonably sure that this is a fair election. The most important thing here is what we call norm building or norm shaping. In Taiwan, we have a separate branch of the government called the Control Yuan. It is independent of the legislation, the parliament, and the administration. And the Control Yuan takes care to publish all the campaign donations and campaign expenses for all the candidates during an election. And so everybody, uh, including the journalism community and so on, can use the raw data, the open data, to make analysis by their own. And because we're a place uh, with um, absolute media freedom, uh, we are rated by Civicus Monitor as the place uh, in all of Asia uh, with the most open civil society in terms of freedom of speech, of assembly, and the press. So we communicated that to Facebook and Google and other multinational companies that have signed on this self-regulation uh, on countering disinformation. And so during our elections and referenda, we make sure that they adhere to the control UN norms because people and the journalism community expects to work with the raw data of the campaign donation and expense instead of uh, data in the aggregate. And so for example, Facebook changed their um, ads library rules so that uh, whenever you push a political or socially um, divisive or potentially divisive um, campaign, uh, the entire history 
including um, the target, the uh, time, the amount of money you put into it, and so on, are all published uh, in real time. And so this is then integrated with civic technologies, work such as the voting guide and so on, and they adhere to the social norm. And we did not pass a specific law for it, because everybody understands in Taiwan, if you violate the social norm, the power of social sanction um, is paramount. And so Facebook changed their algorithm, and Google simply decided to, to not run political advertisements during our election. How did you avoid the amplification effect where repeating disinformation in order to debunk it makes the wrong information spread even more? Um, we make this uh, idea of humor over rumor. So even though we may quote part of the disinformation, we always frame it in a way that is extremely funny and this is called humor over rumor. And because anger can be amplified into humor, or it may amplify into outrage. But these two amplification pathways are mutually exclusive. And so you see here our premier uh, smiling very happily because we started working with not only pharmacies, but uh, also 24-hour convenience stores. But around that time, there was a rumor that says um, the medical mask that's being produced uh, from 1.8 million a day to 18 million a day uh, is of the same material um, as tissue papers. And so there was a panic buying of tissue papers. But we solved that within a couple of days by having the same premier now showing his back and his bottom wiggling it a little bit. And it was a very funny title that says, uh, we only have one pair of Botox each. And so this is hilarious. And then it shows this table that says <clears throat> the tissue papers are produced using South American materials, whereas medical masks are produced using domestic materials. So there's no way that amplifying uh, one production line will affect the other production line. And this is super effective. This meme uh, pushed out only an hour after the rumor gets trending, reaches more people than the disinformation. And because of this, this serves as an emotional inoculation. Everybody who looked at it and laughed at it become immune to the effect of outrage. And indeed, after a couple of days after the rumor died down, we discovered the person who spread this disinformation in the first place was a tissue paper reseller. Go figure. The most important person that I learned is to trust the citizens with data. If you do not trust citizens with accurate scientific data, then citizens have no way to collaborate into your co-creators of policy. In Taiwan, after each central epidemic command signs a daily press conference where uh, it's a ask me anything style, all the journalists are free to ask the ministries uh, of health and welfare everything, the answers are then translated into dog memes or dog memes uh, to be precise. Uh, the spokes dog or zong chai of the CECC um, reminds people to uh, wash their hands, to not touch their faces, to uh, pre-order their mask, to keep their social distance as measured by the number of dogs. Uh, because of this, this spreads to all sorts of different corners of the society. Uh, they are loved by all the different age groups and it inspires people to do co-creation, to remix these materials and make those scientific arguments and scientific facts even more accessible. It also helps that all our leading YouTubers are quite sympathetic of this effort. So quite a few of them work with our Vice President Chen Jianren uh, to record a massive online open course on epidemiology because VP Chen is actually the author of the epidemiology textbook. He is an academician and scientific authority. And so having the VP who hold both political and scientific authority in a very humble way to learn about epidemiology in this new century together with all the citizens is the power of the Taiwan model. Thank you for listening.